Over the last few years, Slack has grown from a Silicon Valley darling to a multi-billion dollar publicly traded company. Slack is no longer used primarily by tech companies and startups. It's used by the federal government, Fox, and over 110,000 other organizations. Slack is the fastest growing enterprise software company of all time. In this video, I'll show you how much I believe Slack stock is worth by looking at their story, market, customer acquisition, and competition. Slack story is about transforming business communication by shifting from inboxes to channels. Slack replaces the use of email within organizations with channel-based messaging. You can use Slack for almost anything. I first became a Slack user in 2014 when I was working for a startup software company. I use Slack to plan features, diagnose bugs, and help run marketing campaigns. We didn't have an office, so all of this was done remotely. For many businesses, most of your time is spent communicating and planning with people on your team. Slack allows you to do this all remotely, and many businesses are making the switch as the result of coronavirus. Stuart Butterfield, the CEO of Slack, recently said, it felt like the shift from inboxes to channels, which we believe to be inevitable over five to seven years, just got fast forwarded by 18 months. Investors are excited by Slack because the market opportunity is big. In Slack's S1 filing, they listed their total addressable market at $28 billion. If you take 28 billion and divide it by their average cost per customer, then Slack believes they have almost 5 million business prospects from around the world. The market is certainly big, but what about the competition? The biggest competitor for Slack is Microsoft Teams. Going against a giant like Microsoft is scary, but Slack seems to be making good progress. Slack grew rapidly by word of mouth through a self-service offering while building a billion dollar business. However, that strategy changed as they realized they would need to invest in a direct sales force to win over enterprise customers. Their direct sales efforts are paying off. In Slack's most recent 10K, they reported 70 customers with greater than a million in annual recurring revenue and 893 paid customers with greater than 100,000. This was 55% up year over year. Winning deals with clients like the federal government and Fortune 100 companies shows that the Microsoft Teams threat may be a bit overstated. Here's what Butterfield recently told CNBC about the competition from Teams. Um, are you ready for this battle to heat up? Are you seeing signs of it yourself? Um, well, I, I don't know that I mean, I think what we've seen over the last couple of months is that um, Teams is not a competitor to Slack. I mean, they talk about the product. They never mention um, the fundamentals that Slack does. And it's been three plus years at this point that they've been bundling it, giving it away for free, talking about us. Um, and over that time, we've grown our entire enterprise business. All of our grid customers, all of our customers with more than $100,000 in revenue have come up during that time. So I think there's this perpetual question, um, which is... At this point, a little puzzling for us um, that at some point, Microsoft's just going to kill us. As you saw, Butterfield is confident where Slack stands. They created a new category of channel-based messaging software, and he believes they are well-positioned to be the category leader for years to come. Another important thing to consider is that many of Slack's customers already use Microsoft, but they still choose Slack over Teams. For many people like myself, the Slack user experience is just much better. So far, I've given a very optimistic story for Slack. Now I'll show you if the numbers back up Slack's market cap, which is just about $18 billion at a share price of $31.66 as of this recording. First, take a look at Slack's revenue. In its most recent annual report, Slack grew 57% year over year to 630 million. With Slack's estimated total addressable market at 28 billion, this means Slack is just scratching the surface of its potential in this market. Slack's market penetration is in the single digits with lots of room to grow. Butterfield projects 200 million working people could benefit from using Slack. 
Here's what he said to CNBC during their IPO. If we're right that there are a couple hundred million people who are going to switch to this kind of model, uh, there's all different kinds of businesses. We have 95,000 customers, and so some of them are you know, big multinationals, 100,000-plus daily active users on, on Slack. Some of them are three-person, five-person startups. Some of them are like a 50-person hotel chain. But there's dentists and tax preparers and government workers and uh, a huge variety of people using Slack. In my valuation, I decided to be very optimistic an estimated Slack will capture 200 million users 10 years from now. Based on Slack's latest public data, Slack has over 12 million active users. To reach 200 million active users, Slack will need to grow their users by 32.5% year over year for the next 10 years. To estimate Slack's revenue in my discounted cash flow analysis, I looked at their average revenue per user. This isn't a number they've released publicly, but I'm able to make a calculation based on other data that has been provided. Slack has 110,000 paid customers, which puts their average revenue per customer at $5,727. Because their customers are businesses and organizations, many of their customers have thousands of employees who become Slack users. This is how over 12 million people use Slack every day. Slack recently announced that over 6 million of their 12 million active users are paid. By taking Slack's revenue of 630 million and dividing it by 6 million paid seats, Slack's average revenue per user is $105. With 105 as the average revenue per user, I estimated Slack's revenue with 200 million users in 2029. Let's say 50% of their users remain paid, 100 million users multiplied by 105 means Slack will earn $11.25 billion in 2029. The other important number to estimate is operating margin. Of course, looking at their current operating margin is pointless because it's negative. In my DCF analysis, I set the operating margin to 25%, which is the midpoint of what Slack projected on investor day. After running the numbers on my spreadsheet, Slack's value per share comes out to $23.87. This is what I believe the value of Slack stock is worth today. I believe Slack is a great company with an awesome CEO, but my numbers don't back up investing in Slack right now. I believe I'm telling a very optimistic story, but in my valuation, Slack is worth about $14 billion, while the current market cap is almost $18 billion. Ultimately, Slack will be worth a lot more money if they can innovate and increase their average revenue per user. The biggest enterprise software companies have a much higher average revenue per user than Slack. And these companies have a bigger market cap as a result. To sum up, I believe Slack has a bright future, but I'm holding off until the stock price comes down or there's more data that shows Slack can get more money from each user. If you think I missed anything or have ideas of how Slack can increase revenue, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. I'll be releasing more videos soon. Thanks for watching.